Ahoy there and welcome back to Build the Boys. We now have issue 95 of Hashet's Build the Titanic. Uh, and in this one we get something you've all been wanting for a while. A massive piece of keel. I mean this is... This is big. So we've got a great big piece of keel that's going to be going on to this one. We also have uh, the port bilge and the starboard bilge parts of the keel as well. Um, so this should firm up our hull quite nicely. Um, and it's, start, it's going to start to look a lot more complete than what it is because our hull is still looking rather incomplete. Um, it, it needs more to it, and this is certainly going to do that. So um, the work on this one's light. I mean, it always is. Whenever we're doing hull or keel sections, the work's going to be light. I mean, this really is very little. We're fitting nothing to the ship in this issue. In next issue, I believe we will be, but in this issue, we fit nothing to the ship. We are literally fit in the um the bilges to the to the keel part itself then we attach it to the ship in the next one but it's all work has got to be done so let's get into it okay so let's see what it is that we are dealing with now those are going to be the bilge pieces yes they are right okay let's disappear that And there is our keel piece, that is big. And then we have our, these should be our bilge pieces. Let's get these unwrapped. Good neck. Got a little overboard on the wrapper, I think, but you know, keeps them safe, that's good. There we are. Piece here and this piece here. Now, there's been a little panic in the community about oh, it's plastic. No, it isn't, right? So I can tell you now, this is indeed metal. This is plastic. So there is a plastic insert inside your metal keel. This is metal. It's metal, 100%. This is not plastic. This is metal. I can feel it's metal. This is metal. Um, this is plastic. Now you're going to need that so you can screw something to it. So this is ultimately where our engine room's gonna go. So yes, this part's plastic. This part, however, metal, okay? So relax, calm down, it's metal. Trust me, it's freezing cold, it's metal. Um, so what we're doing in this one is quite light, right? So we are attaching these parts here. These are the, uh, the these are plastic, um, are gonna be attaching to here. Now you glue these in and that's it. So, Let's find out exactly where these are going. So I mean, uh huh, uh huh. Yep, 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 yep. And yep. So that's how that's going to go. So those are going to go all in there like that. We're going to glue those in place, but that's all we're doing. So we're not attaching this to the actual hull yet. I believe that's going to happen in the next one. So we have another piece we can extend this, then we're going to attach the hull, I believe. So let's get these glued up. Let's get these installed. Okay, so how this is going to work, using this orientation, we have the five holes uh, at this end. This is going to tell us that this is port and this is starboard. But what we're going to do is going to flip this one over. So now we know that this is port. And this is starboard. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Because these are attaching to the bottom of this. Now we have an L on this one. And that is for the port side. So we have that one's going over there. And we have an R on this one. Let me see if I can show you that. There's the R. Which means this one is going on this section. So these are going to fit to the outside of our vessel. Like so. And we are going to glue these in place. And then we'll be done with this issue. So I'm going to get these glued up and we'll get these installed. So those are installed. And that is how we're now looking. So you can kind of get an idea that we've got these, uh, these on there. And that's how that now is. That's it. So even though it's a massive piece, always the way with part works. The bigger the piece, the less the work. It's very strange, but it's always the way. Um, there's a lot more to do in the next one. But anyway, let's have a chat. So that's that one done. I mean, it is an enormous piece of keel, but there's very little work to do in it. It's always the way, always the way with part works. So if you get a huge piece, and it is a huge piece, there's very little work to do. But in the next one, we do get another piece. We're going to extend this even further. We get another piece of keel. We're going to extend this further. Then I believe we're attaching it to the actual hull. 
So that's gonna that's really gonna firm it up, which is gonna be a beautiful thing. Um, I wish there was more, but that's what, that's what there is for this one. It's always the way. The bigger the piece, the less there is to do. Always the way. Um, if you are just sticking around with build instructions, thank you for stopping by. Um, it, it's fairly simple in this this week. Um, but if you are sticking around for our Titanic talk, uh, we are talking about this gentleman here. And that is Archibald Butt, who was uh, a military advisor to numerous presidents. He was very well known, he was very well respected. Um, and he was an advisor to both President Taft and um, Roosevelt. Um, the, the, the strange one about this one is um, he was in the middle of an argument between Taft and uh, Roosevelt at the time. And um, it took it out of him. He was he was bad. He was he was tired, and he was advised to well, why don't you take a vacation? Why don't you why don't you travel um and see Europe? So he did, which is what ended up him being on the Titanic. But he didn't go alone. He was traveling with somebody. He was traveling with Francis David Miller, who we discussed in the last one, who was always referred to as my artist friend that I live with. Now, uh, Archibald Butt never married. Uh, was never known to have a fiance. Never really had time for for the ladies, is what they'd say. He was devoted to his job. He hasn't got any time for the ladies. Yet he owned a house with uh, Francis Millet. They lived together for about twenty years, um, and they used to have very extravagant parties. and And they would have politicians, artists, musicians, actors, everybody at these very very affluent parties that they would have, and they would have them regularly. Um, now, over the years, we've looked at it, and it's been like, okay, so I think they were more than friends, weren't they? I think that's what's going on here. The fact that Millet lived away from his wife, um, was they were estranged. Um, Archibald Butt never never had a wife, and they lived together. Now, there are some people that they were just friends. Okay, maybe they were. Maybe they were just friends, but come on. I mean, let's, let's be realistic. So I'm not going to out somebody. I'm not going to speak ill of the dead or so to speak, but I think if, if what it seems to be the case that they were a couple, it's sad that they lived in a time where they couldn't be more open with each other. Now they did share a, uh, a room on the boat when they, uh, they sailed over from America to, um, to Europe, but on Titanic, they did have separate rooms because uh, two men sharing a room wasn't a thing. So they did have separate rooms. Um, take from what you will. Ultimately, does it matter? No, it doesn't. I don't think it matters who you choose to love or what your relationship is. I don't. But I think it's sad that they um, it wasn't acknowledged. But um, they were a very early example of don't ask, don't tell. So it was kind of common knowledge. But if no one asks, no one says it out loud. Well, it's not true, is it? It's not a thing. So it was don't ask, don't tell. Um, so everyone knew, but no one said. And then in death, when there were people saying, no, I think it's right that we say that the, these, were, these were two men that loved each other, however that love was, um, it, it never gets mentioned. It, do, it just doesn't. Um, and it's not until more recently we've been going, well, hold on, this, this needs to be acknowledged. Um, both men did sadly die on board Titanic, but they died as they lived together. So it is one of those love stories, regardless of what that love was or how that love looked, whether it was love between friends or it was romantic love. It was two men that loved each other that died together. So they were together. They weren't alone when this happened. They were together. They died as they lived together. And I think that's beautiful. I just do. Um, it, as, as I said, it's been polarizing for years. Some people get really angry about this, like really angry. The um, Archibald Butler was a military man. He'd never been like, okay. Um, relax, it's okay. Um, if he wasn't, then he wasn't, was he? I mean, but it, if he was, then he was. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you choose to love or how you choose to live. It just doesn't. But I think it, we should acknowledge that these were two men that loved each other, regardless of what that entailed, um, and were together when they died. It's it's like uh, uh, the Strausers that, that were together when they died. We thought it was very romantic. I think there's, there's something romantic about this. Even if they were friends, there's something very romantic about being with someone who you loved on that that terrible, terrible night. And um, I think it's a beautiful thing, I do.
That's all for this one. Uh, we will be back very soon to finish out the month with issue 96 of the Titanic, where we will hopefully be adding this to the um, to the hull. Tune in for that one. It's going to be good. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe. In a world where you can be anything at all, just be nice. And I will see you very, very soon for more of Hatchet's Build the Titanic. I'll see you then. Thank you.